Hello all, welcome to Tech Vistas. In this video, we will talk about load balancer versus API gateway. In my uh, previous videos, I have covered load balancer and API gateway. So if you have not seen that uh, those videos, uh, please look at them before uh, proceeding here. Because in those videos, I have uh, covered uh, both topics uh, in depth. So uh, we have a lot of confusion between the architect and developers about uh, load balancer and API gateway. That uh, with, I mean, which is the first component uh, which get the request from the client. So suppose you have a client as a mobile internet or browser. So and in your architecture, you have microservices and you also have load balancer and API gateway then what is the single point of communication for the client and who receive a request uh, first from the client right second a confusion is uh, which is which component is doing the load balancing because api gateway also has uh, some uh, capabilities of load balancing then uh, why we need load balancer uh, for a particular functionality a uh, third confusion is that whenever we talk about the microservices then why we talk about api gateway can't we uh, just use the load balancer and don't utilize the API gateway at all. And then uh, whenever we are resolving a DNS, right? Suppose you have some URL and client hits that. And once it resolves that URL, which is the component it uh, receives that request, right? So uh, basically these are a few uh, confusions or questions uh, we always have in our mind. So let us understand first the difference between load balancer and API gateway then we'll go and answer these uh, questions as well so in general api gateway is used for the api management and load balancer is used uh, for the traffic management uh, like uh, for the various clusters or or the server pool right um, but api gateway provides uh, far more capabilities than load balancer also there are a few capabilities in which both overlaps but API gateway is like uh, mostly used for the microservices uh, and because it provides the capabilities uh, which are required uh, for the microservice architecture. And load balancer is a component which has been used uh, even before the microservices architecture came into existence uh, to distribute traffic uh, between the among the servers and clusters, right? So let's understand the difference between uh, these two. Uh, one by one. So API gateway uh, is, uh, as I told earlier, it is mostly used for the API management uh, for the backend microservices because in any organization there would be hundreds or thousands of API contract, right? So you need some kind of a central place uh, where you can uh, manage them or uh, if some team want to create new APIs, they can look up and basically they can reuse those API contracts or API uh, definitions, right? So that's why the main functionality of API gateway is the API management. On the other hand, load balancer, the main functionality is the traffic distribution. So whenever we have traffic coming uh, from client side, so it uh, distributes uh, to the various servers or cluster of servers uh, based on the certain algorithms, right? Like round robin and all those algorithms, right? So, uh, and second, like uh, also uh, this API gateway provide the load balancing as well. So, uh, suppose uh, you have a cluster of uh, microservices and uh, then it want to uh, route any request to a particular microservice, then it will also load balance. Like suppose uh, you have one microservice and has like suppose five instances. So, it will load balance that request between those instances. But uh, the load balancer also, I mean, main purpose of load balancer is to uh, distribute traffic which is incoming from the uh, client side, not from the within API or within a functionality point of view. So uh, the traffic which is like coming maybe from the mobile channel or from the uh, browser or IVR, right? That is going to hit the load balancer first. So that uh, is basically allotted to the various servers uh, by the load balancer. And next thing about the API gateway is that uh, it also uh, makes sure that whatever request it is coming, uh, I'm coming to API gateway, 
it routes to the correct API, right? Correct microservice. Uh, because it has inbuilt routing logic that can be configured as well. So API Gateway is capable of routing uh, the request to the correct API. But a load balancer is not concerned about the any API management and also that's why there is no functionality about uh, that in load balancer. Next is the authentication, authorization and auditing. So these are the extra capabilities uh, provided by the API Gateway, but these are not in the uh, load balancer and not required as well, right? So basically API Gateway can authenticate, authorize and audit the requests, right? Which are coming uh, to uh, it. Then uh, also suppose a client uh, sending a request in different format, suppose XML format, but backend services need JSON uh, request. So uh, API Gateway can transform those uh, requests in a appropriate format. Uh, also vice versa, so suppose client need in different format. So rather than each service uh, doing that, API Gateway can uh, do that for all services. So it can transform the request response uh, at the API Gateway level uh, so that client or the services can get request in the uh, required format. Then rate limiting and billing. So uh, as suppose we know that okay, a particular service uh, can take up suppose a 20 request per millisecond, but uh, there is a surge of requests coming to that service, and if we allow it, then it's going to basically uh, bring down for the application. So uh, to avoid that, we use these rate limiting. Uh, in that, uh, we limit the request uh, which can be served by the uh, web service and then we drop those extra requests. Also, if you have uh, some uh, APIs which are already monetized, right? Suppose you are charging your customer uh, like per request basis. So on that case, uh, you can utilize the billing capability as well uh, from the API gateway and you can uh, generate statements uh, for your uh, customer uh, and charge them. Then uh, we also have a capability of uh, caching a response. So in case uh, there is some response uh, which can be uh, served to the customer multiple times and even uh, it is not required to go back to the microservices to produce it again. So that can be cached at the API gateway level uh, so that we can uh, basically save on the uh, couple of hop which are happening uh, while we are calling to the microservices. So yeah, so caching will basically speed up uh, the performance of the application as well. Uh, next capability, we have the circuit breaker. So this basically help us uh, to uh, prevent, uh, like uh, keep calling these services which are down maybe uh, temporarily or permanently, right? So uh, this uh, capability is also there in API Gateway. And uh, so uh, it helps basically to uh, send response which is cast or maybe uh, fail fast. Otherwise, uh, it might be uh, having some delays or like uh, some uh, like uh, a performance going down for the application, right? So also uh, API Gateway provides the capability uh, for the monitoring of the uh, of the APIs or requests, right? So whatever the request response is going uh, back and forth, that can be monitored by the uh, API gateway and also we can set some alerts, right? Suppose you have some matrix uh, breached, so at that time we can have those alerts as well. Then logging as well, whatever the logging you want to do, suppose any exception handling or any, any error, error log, right? You want to uh, capture or maybe request response also we can be captured, can be captured at the API gateway uh, level. So these are the various uh, capabilities for the API, uh, API gateway. Then I mean, these capabilities are not covered uh, by the load balancer. So there's no point of uh, uh, going through these about uh, for the load balancer because uh, the, the capabilities which are powered by the load balancer are basically the uh, traffic dis distribution and load balancing of the incoming request to the various server pools or the clusters. Then uh, also scaling up and down. So suppose uh, you have a new servers being added to your infrastructure so at that time uh, you can uh, basically utilize load balancer to so make sure that okay uh, that that server also get traffic immediately right after the health check is completed so uh, also in case like uh, there is uh, some server is going down 
and then uh, there should not be any impact to the customer response, right? So uh, the uh, Load balancer will make sure that the traffic which was supposed to be served by that failed uh, server will be served by the other healthy server. So, this failure management can also be done by the uh, load balancer. Then, uh, we also have the uh, content based uh, routing, like for the level 7 or application based, application level based load balancers, uh, we can uh, route to the servers uh, based on the content of the request. So these are the various capabilities uh, which API Gateway and the Urban provides. So let us understand, like uh, in the typical uh, typical scenario, right? So if you have if you want to utilize the uh, capabilities of both load balancer and the API Gateway, so uh, how can we configure that like in a very generic manner? So normally uh, there will be some URL, right, of your application, so that can be hit by the uh, customers. Then uh, it will be resolved by DNS uh, resolver. Then a request is going to hit to load balancer because load balancer will resolve to uh, some port or uh, some uh, IP address, right? So uh, that is like a, a single point of uh, service. Uh, that from there it will be sent to the API gateway. Now API gateway utilize all the capabilities of as we discussed in earlier uh, earlier slide. So apart from those, it can also route uh, the request to the uh, correct microservice. So uh, if you think about uh, the whole architecture, uh, load balancer should be in front of the API gateway. And then uh, API gateway will distribute the request based on the, uh, the microservices routing, right? So this is like generic, uh, generic uh, architecture of the or design of the uh, both component when they are uh, together. So let us understand like uh, the confusions, right, which we discussed in the first slide. Have we cleared those confusions or not? Like first one was, uh, which is the uh, single point of communication uh, from client. Uh, so, I mean, it's not like a hard and fast rule, but in general, uh, load balancer is uh, the first point of contact because uh, the traffic is coming to the application that is like a, it can be for anything right so uh, uh, it will first uh, uh, send the traffic to the various uh, servers or clusters so that the traffic can be managed properly so it is the first uh, point of contact uh, for the uh, for the client request then uh, why do we need load balancer so uh, in in case we have api gateway uh, has those capabilities uh, because like load balancer is doing the uh, load balancing at the application level, right? So the request coming uh, to your application is like routed to the servers by the load balancer. But once it goes to API gateway, API gateway will also do load balancing based on the microservices level. So suppose you have one microservice and that has uh, 10 uh, virtual machines or 10 instances, right? So there at the routing level of the microservice, it will do a load balancing. So both are like same capabilities, but they operate at different layers. So that's why uh, we we need uh, the API gateway and load balancer both uh, for this particular capability. Then uh, why we use API gateways for microservices, why it is so popular? Yeah, same like same capability, right? Like API management and also uh, like the rate limiting, uh, circuit breaker, triple A, and so many and so forth, right? So there are various capabilities which API Gateway provides. Although it becomes very complex, I have seen uh, in many projects that API Gateway configuration is very complex to maintain, and yeah, but uh, ultimately it's very useful because as your organization, uh, you have a place where as like a go to place where you can go and uh, see all the APIs which are being served by uh, your organization and then you can manage them, right, so at one place. So that's why API Gateway is utilized uh, in case we use the uh, microservice architecture. Then, yeah, so uh, yeah, I think we discussed already in the previous slide. So uh, it resolved to the load balancer. So whenever uh, we have uh, DNS resolved, so first point of contact uh, should be at load balancer. I'm not saying that it is a, uh, it is a, like a, uh, always true. It might be uh, like some in some cases you just try to use the API gateway as well. But yeah, in general it should be the load balancer. So uh, that's it uh, for this comparison between the load balancer and API gateway. 
I uh, hope you uh, liked it and uh, thank you very much uh, for watching uh, see you next time in my next any video and then also uh, yeah please leave your comments or questions if you have any i will try to reply them uh, promptly and uh, please subscribe my channel if you like the video and it adds to you any uh, i mean capabilities or anything from your uh, learning point of view uh, so please subscribe uh, thank you uh, for your time